Get excited, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. The Carlton County Memorial Library presents Storytime with Miss Sheila. joined us for another edition of Storytime with Miss Sheila. You know, teachers are powerful and they change lives. In this book called Sister Anne's Hands, we're going to find out how one teacher changed the life of a child. Boys and girls, I'm excited. This month, we're talking about communication, and I have with me Miss Marcella Brock, and she is a signer, a signer for a long, long time. Ever since you were 10 years old, Miss Brock? I started when I was 10. Awesome. And she's been with the Carlton County School District for 15 years as a signer, working with the hearing impaired, right? Hearing impaired program, yes. That is wonderful. Well, she's going to be our signer all month long. I hope you enjoy her. Sister Anne's Hands by Mary Beth Lorbiecki, illustrated by K. Wendy Pop. Let's go inside. The summer I turned seven, flowers had power. Peace signs were in, and we watched the Ed Sullivan Show every Sunday night. That's the summer word went around that a new teacher had come to town. One night after we'd been put to bed, Mom said in a whisper, She'll be Anne's teacher. And Dad replied, I don't know how a woman of her color is going to survive. Of her color? I wondered, what color could she be? Purple? Green? Orange? That night, my dreams were full of teachers as colorful as birds. Finally, the day came when I walked down the hall to my new room and saw her. She had a black dress and veil like all the other nuns, but her skin was darker than any persons I'd ever known. And who are you, child? She said with sparkles in her voice. Anna Zabrocki, I answered, seeing she had a space between her teeth just like me. Mighty fine freckles you have, she said, smiling widely. Anyone kissed by angels as much as you must have wings sprouting for sure. Well, let me tell you, no one had ever connected me with angels before. I was the one they sent to the hall for talking in class or to the principal for mouthing off. When she reached out to touch my cheek, I dodged her hands as if it were hot. It was puppy brown with white lacy moons for nails and palm side up it was pink with dark lines a light pretty pink like an evening dress for barbie i tried not to stare she didn't seem to notice welcome to the second grade i'm sister ann that day to start class sister ann had us tell some of our very best jokes even the nun ones like What's black and white, and black and white, and black and white? A nun rolling down the stairs. And when she read to us at story time, she did all the voices, low or high or grunting. Then she had us counting the buttons on our clothes, pencils in our desk, and teeth in our heads. After all that adding and subtracting, we ended up toothless, pencil rich, and with buttons on our underwear. I'd never had so much fun at school. <laughs> but after lunch, a paper airplane 
airplane sailed past Sister Anne's head and hit the blackboard. Whoosh! There was a note written on the wings. Sister Anne read it out loud. Roses are red, violets are blue. Don't let Sister Anne get any black on you. A few giggles rippled across the room. Sister Anne's face froze like a tongue on an icy post. This is funny, she asked us softly. We didn't say a thing. I felt as guilty as if I'd made the airplane. I'll need some quiet time to think about this, if you know what I mean. We did. You could have heard a butterfly sigh for the rest of that day. We went home with plenty on our minds. That night in my bed, all I could see was Sister Anne's hands as she reached out to me. The next morning, we all slunk into the classroom and we were shocked at what we saw. Sister Anne had plastered the room with pictures of black people, poor or dying, some hanging from trees and others shot and bleeding. We saw signs over white fountains saying whites only and people marching with posters, go back to Africa. None of us knew what to say. These are the colors of hatred, Sister Anne said. Do you know how they feel? In some places, if you had to go to the bathroom and the only toilet not being used was the one for colored people, you'd have to hold it or go behind a tree. That had us squirming in our seats. Then she seemed to warm up to us a little. One thing you're going to learn is that some folks have their hearts wide open and others are tight as a fist. The tighter they are, the more dangerous. For me, I'd rather open my door enough to let everyone in than risk slamming it shut on God's big toe. All of a sudden, I could see this big toenail hanging out of the clouds and I wanted to laugh. It was clear Sister Anne was giving us another chance. Now, she said, I will sit here to teach and that's what I'm going to do. And she did. Some kids were pulled from her class by their parents, but we didn't miss them much. Sister Anne taught us to write and paint and garden. She had us singing and clapping and stomping our feet while learning our two plus 12 and six minus three. She took us to the library to visit islands in the ocean and countries across the sea. She taught us about people we'd never heard of before, like Phyllis Wheatley, Matthew Henson, and Sir German Truth. There was this minister she liked too, Dr. Martin Luther King, who was sometimes on the television news. She said he was trying to help people of all different colors get along. The year zoomed past so fast, I could hardly believe it. On the last day of school, Sister Anne gave us the bad news. She wouldn't be coming back. She had been transferred to a school in Chicago. When it came time to say goodbye, I stuck around till everyone else had gone. Then I pulled out a card I'd made for her. Inside were two hands, one white with little orange polka dots and the other filled with browns and pinks and whites. Sister Anne just stared at the car for a long time. She didn't say anything, but her eyes got kind of watery. Finally, she smiled and touched my face. Looks like my little Anna Angel is learning how to use her wings. I never heard what happened to Sister Anne after she left for Chicago, but I do know what happened to me. Now, whenever I draw someone's hands or big toes, I fill in with browns and pinks and whites, reds and yellows and blues, polka dot circles and stripes. And that's the end of Sister Anne's hands.